Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It sure is great to see you again. I'm Miss Lauren, and we're going to have a wonderful Wednesday. We're going to be busy today, singing and dancing, checking in with Professor Hester and Lester, and we're going to read an amazing story. Plus, we're all going to jump to our feet and move it. And when we're done, we've got some of the best games and activities from all of ABC Mouse, just for you. This week, we've been talking about communities. Today, we'll learn even more about all the special people who live in our communities. By the way, how many of you have a dog as a pet? Yes! That's great! Well, I have a dog named Pickles. Every day when I walk Pickles in the park, I get to see some of my favorite people. They're all part of the community. My friend Greg is the gardener in the park, and today he was putting some daisies right next to the part of the park where the dogs can play. Everyone at the dog park was excited about the pretty daisies Greg had planted. They made visiting the park even more enjoyable. Do you have a favorite spot in your community that you like to visit? Yes! The playground? The store? The library? Those are all really fun places. So let's just remind ourselves one more time what this week's special word, community, means. A community is a group of people who live, work, and play in the same place. So when you hear that word, think about all the people, and sometimes animals, who live, work, and play in the same place. We have so many exciting things to learn, so let's get everyone warmed up with the third part of our chant. Mr. Dan is here again to lead you. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Dan, and today we are going to learn even more of our chant about community helpers. We're going to learn a verse about firefighters. It sounds like this. Firefighters work hard and fast, helping forest fires not last. When you smell smoke with your nose, they'll put out flames using a hose. Just like before, I'm going to say a line and then you'll repeat after me. Firefighters work hard and fast. Firefighters work hard and fast. Helping forest fires not last. Helping forest fires not last. When you smell smoke with your nose, They'll put out flames using a hose. They'll put out flames using a hose. Those are lots of verses you have learned, and I'm so excited that tomorrow we're going to add another verse to our chant about community helpers. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. That chant is stuck in my head. I've even been singing it to Pickles when we take our walks together. And the other day, I think Pickles was kind of singing it too. In a community, there are always people who are extra helpful. These extra helpful people work really hard to keep everyone safe. Sometimes they even risk their own lives to do it. We call these people heroes. Have you ever heard that word before? Heroes? Yes! Excellent! When I hear that word, I immediately think of superheroes. Superheroes are super cool. But heroes can also be people we see in our community every day. They may not wear a cape or be able to fly through the air, but they're ready to help us whenever we need them. Like the postal carrier who never fails to deliver our mail, even in the rain. Or the farmer who gets up before the sun to make sure we have delicious food on our plates. Can you think of heroes in your own community? Yes! There are so many more than you probably ever realized. Go ahead, yell them out. A nurse, a vet, yes, a veterinarian. They help keep the animals healthy. A school crossing guard. And yes, someone even said a service dog. They absolutely protect their humans. It's surprising to learn there are so many people and pets working to keep us safe and healthy. Oh, and I can't leave out the most important hero of all, you. When you do things like pick up the trash in the park, or when you recycle cans and bottles, you're kind of a hero too. That's because you're helping keep your community clean and a nice place to live. Are you ready to learn about another community hero? Yes! 
This hero has a very cool job, but it can actually get super hot when they're at work. Can you guess? That's right, I'm talking about firefighters. Here's a fast fact. Did you know firefighters go to school just like us? Yep, they complete 100 hours of training before they're allowed to enter a burning building. A hundred hours? <laughs> Sounds like a lot of homework. All right, Armand, out. Whew, firefighters really work hard. I'm very grateful for all the heroes in our community who help keep us safe and healthy. In fact, let's show them our gratitude by shouting a huge thank you. Ready? One, two, three, thank you. Yay! Next time you see a community hero, think about thanking them for being someone in your community that you can count on. Speaking of counting, get up. That's right, get up. It's time to move it and count with our shapey friends. Ready? Let's go. Ready? Let's Geo go and move to 20 with my friends, the Shapies. <laughs> First up, arm reaches. Ready? Count to 20 by ones. One, two, three, four. Count to 20 by twos. Ready? the move it? Yes! Oh, good! You know, heroes move a lot to stay in shape. For example, firefighters train hard so that when there's an emergency, they can carry someone out of a burning building or climb a ladder with heavy equipment. But I always wonder, what exactly do they do between emergencies? Hmm. Polish their boots? Clean the fire truck? Inspect the hoses? Well, I have a book for you that might answer all your questions. It's called A Day at the Firehouse. A Day at the Firehouse. We do a lot at the firehouse. We clean the firehouse. We clean the fire engine. We cook and eat our meals here. We sleep here too. The alarm rings. We move fast. We put on our hats. We put on our coats. We put on our boots. We hop on the fire engine and rush to the fire. Cars move out of the way. We spray water on the fire. We make sure the fire is out. realize firefighters sleep at the fire station, did you? No 
But it makes sense, because they have to leave quickly when they get a call to put out a fire, which can happen at any time, day or night. Did you learn anything new about firefighters? Yes! Great! Would you like to learn even more? Yes! Well, Saya got a chance to talk to a real-life firefighter, so let's check it out. Thanks for meeting with me today. I'm excited to interview a real-life firefighter. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here to answer any questions that you have. How long have you been a firefighter? I've been a firefighter for 11 years now. Who helps you do your job? That's a great question. We have a lot of people that work in the fire station and we all really do consider ourselves teammates. I'm a firefighter paramedic and I have a partner who's a firefighter paramedic. But in the fire station, we could have as many as 10 to 12 firefighters in a fire station at any given time. Have you always wanted to be a firefighter? I have. Since I was a little boy, I've always wanted to be a firefighter. I used to live next to a fire station and I would watch the fire trucks leave all the time. When I was playing sports or out playing with my friends. If a fire truck was driving by, I was watching it. And from that moment, I knew I wanted to be a firefighter. Well, thank you so much again. I know all the kids at home are super grateful to have people like you in our community. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Wow, firefighters are truly amazing, aren't they? So let's keep learning about them. Here's Armand with another fast fact to share with you all. Here you go, fast fact fans. When the fire alarm sounds at a fire station, can you guess how long it takes a firefighter to get dressed and on the fire truck to leave the station? Remember, they have a lot of heavy gear they need to put on. But go ahead, guess. 10 minutes. Ooh, 15. 20. <laughs> nope. It takes less than two minutes for a firefighter to get dressed and ready to fight a fire. For this community hero, every second counts. Armand, out. Two minutes to put on all that gear? That is super fast. It takes me 10 minutes just to decide what to wear every morning. Of course, firefighters have uniforms, so it's not really a fair comparison. But did you know that the uniforms can even tell you what kind of firefighters they are? Yes, there are different kinds of firefighters. There are firefighters that work in cities to keep people and buildings safe. Then, there are firefighters who help put out fires in the forest. They take extra care to make sure all the plants and animals in the forest are protected. This includes maintaining the forest area throughout the year. They do this by cutting down dead trees that would burn easily, or they plant new trees after a fire so the soil doesn't come loose and cause damage. On Monday, we learned that the place where plants and animals live is called a habitat. Yesterday, we talked about some of the amazing animal habitats around the world, but today we're going to explore some of the very special plant habitats. Let's join Professor Hester and Lester to learn more. Hi, everyone. I'm Professor Esther Hester, and this is my nephew, Lester. Today, we are at a botanical garden. These plants come from all over the world, but in here, we aren't seeing them in their natural habitats. Hab what? Habitat, a place in nature where plants and animals usually live, is called a habitat. For example, some plants are usually found in deserts. Other plants are mainly found in forests, and some plants are found only high up in the mountains. Those are all habitats. Plants in one habitat often look quite different from plants that live in a different habitat, but plants have special parts that help them survive where they live, like this one. Do you know what kind of plant this is? I sure do. It's a cactus. That's right, Lester. This is a saguara cactus. Notice how it doesn't have any leaves? That's because it has to survive in a desert where there is very little water. If it had leaves, the water inside the cactus could escape through the leaves into the hot air, and it would dry up. Kind of like when I sweat when I play baseball. Exactly. 
So instead of leaves, the cactus has a tough skin that keeps the water inside. This plant is called a Venus flytrap, and it's one of the few plants that actually eats its food. Wow, that plant eats food just like you and me? It sure does. The Venus flytrap grows in places where the soil doesn't have all of the nutrients it needs to survive. So the Venus flytrap can capture and eat insects. Ooh, brr. It sure is cold in this exhibit. That's because the tundra environment is among the Earth's coldest and harshest habitats. A couple of plants that can survive in this environment are bearberry and arctic moss. The tundra has long, dark, cold winters, and the plants need to be able to survive when the ground is frozen. Most of these plants are very short, and so they grow close to the ground, where it's a little warmer than it is higher in the air. That's awesome! All these plants have special features that help them survive in their own habitats. You're right, Lester. And when a plant has special parts that help it to survive in its habitat, those are called adaptations. Can you guess what kind of plant I am? I'll give you a hint. I'm not a teacher tulip. Any guesses? A cactus! That's right. I'm a cactus. Do you remember where cactuses grow? That is, where their natural habitat is? Let's say the rhyme we learned. Habitat sat. Rat-a-tat-tat -tat, with a bat in a hat with a cat in a habitat. There are so many amazing and unusual plants in the desert. They figured out how to survive in their super hot habitats by developing tough skins and prickly spines. So what's your favorite plant? Wait, wait, don't tell me. Instead, hold your body in the shape of the plant you like the most and I'll try to guess. Hmm, I may need just one clue. Ooh, I know. I see some roses and marigolds and chrysanthemums and ferns. And there's an apple tree, plus some carnations and daffodils. Are these really your favorites? Yes! Well, then I'm going to tell Greg, the gardener, all about your plants, and I'm sure it will give him some ideas about what to plant in the park this year for everyone in the community to enjoy. I hope you had fun today learning about heroes in our communities and learning what our firefighters do to keep our communities safe. Now that we know a little more about the many heroes in our community, I hope you'll be on the lookout for them. And what will you do when you see them in person? Thank you! That's right! You'll give them a big thank you! Well, my friends, it's time to say goodbye. But now that we're done here, I have so much more you can do. There are activities, puzzles, and math games that I want everyone to try. The more you do, the more you'll learn. And of course, the more you learn, the more you'll love learning. Enjoy. And don't forget to meet me back here for our next class. Saya is going to introduce us to a super special person you're going to want to meet. Go play your games. ABCMouse.com